Today on Animal Fact Files, we're discussing stovepipe sponges, along with their relatives. Sponges from this genus are also known as candle sponges, tube sponges, and rope sponges, all receiving these various common names based on their appearance. These sponges are cylindrical, often yellow in color, and have an opening at the top of their tubes. The rope sponges also have rope-like projections surrounding this opening. Other species don't have these ropes, so that's why they're distinguished with a different common name. Like the other members of this genus, stovepipe sponges are sessile, meaning they don't move around once they've found a place to settle. These invertebrates are most abundant in the Atlantic Ocean, but also live in the Pacific Ocean and the Mediterranean Sea. In some parts of their range, they make up the greatest number of sponges on the reef. Stovepipe sponges and their kin live along the ocean floor from shallow, clear waters to depths of over a hundred feet. Some can even be found in undersea caves. Stovepipe sponges in deep habitats grow to larger sizes. While some shallow living species may only reach a few feet in tube length, those further below the waves span more than 9 feet from base to the top of the tubes. It should be noted, however, that shallow species tend to have more tubes than their deeper counterparts. The tubes are hollow and create homes for other animals on the reef, like shrimp and small fish. The hole at the top of a stovepipe sponge's tube is called an osculum. Water is expelled from here as part of the filter feeding process. Like other sponges, stovepipe sponges and their relatives create water currents through their bodies in order to capture planktonic organisms and detritus floating in the water. These prey are captured in the sponge's body, and the remaining water is forced out of the top of the sponge. Sponges in this genus also have a large accumulation of bacteria living inside their body. These bacteria may act as a food source, but they also exist without being digested by the sponges. Sea turtles, like hawksbills, as well as sea slugs, eat stovepipe sponges and their congeners. Fish also try to take bites out of them. However, when they're attacked, the sponges let loose a noxious chemical that repels the fish. This is also an anti-fouling measure. So other organisms, like barnacles, can't attach to the sponge's surface. These compounds are a large reason behind scientific research on these animals. They've provided the building blocks for all kinds of antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral, and other pharmaceuticals. And that's not even mentioning that they're the original bath sponge. Unlike many sponge species with a glass-like body structure, stovepipe sponges are squishable. If a human loses a body part, another human will not grow from that lost body part. But this isn't the case with sponges. If a chunk of a stovepipe sponge breaks off from a predator attack or rough seas, the broken off piece has a chance to grow into a new sponge. It needs an appropriate environment, like a hard surface to stick to and a current to bring it food. But if these conditions are met, a new sponge is born. This is a form of asexual reproduction. Stovepipe sponges and their kin also reproduce sexually. Sperm released into the water column are gathered into other nearby sponges and fertilize their eggs. The eggs hatch into larvae that then settle to the seafloor once an appropriate spot is located. For more facts on stovepipe sponges, check out the links below. Give a thumbs up if you learned something new today. Thank you to our patrons, SpikeSpeagle93, Dad, and everyone else for their support of this channel. And thank you for watching Animal Fact Files.